I love it. Hello, 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 and welcome. Uh, this is the open source stream currently sponsored by Cockroach Labs. I'm so bad at pointing at the logo. I'll get this someday. Um, I'm your host, Rain Leander, developer advocate at Cockroach Labs. And every Monday we explore an open source project. Um, check out their getting started docs and file an issue if we need to find something. Um, and this week we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to talk about Kamunda, which I love, love, love. Um, I will let my my colleague, my uh, guest, introduce himself and Kamunda because I'm one of those people that like I kind of know what Kamunda is, but I'm not a hundred percent sure what Kamunda is. I just know that it's something to handle processes. Or whatnot. Uh, David, welcome. Um, why don't you talk to me about your, yeah, what is Kamunda? What are we doing here? Um, so I have no idea what we're doing here, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> yes, that is accurate. Kamunda is a business process management software. So you can sort of build business process flows and handle all sorts of complex business processes by sort of orchestrating them all with Kamunda. Cool. Yeah. It might, that makes it, any sense, but. You know, the part for me when I felt like I started to understand what Kamunda is was when you and I were working on uh, the IoT, the garden, the greenhouse project together and and you were like okay so what can you talk to me about that and uh because that's a really good use case for what community can do it is so if you... besides so catch water bottles that mess over there nice is actually the greenhouse and it's actually working which part of it? Talk to, let's go back to the beginning. What is the greenhouse? Okay. So I had this crazy idea mm -hmm. that I would like to build a greenhouse that is monitored by IoT sensors. And then the whole thing is managed by Kamunda, right? So let's say the way I talk about it most is let's say you're running a big greenhouse and you're growing a crop and that crop needs the humidity in a certain range, the temperature in a certain range. They need to have a certain amount of water. Um, and so you can monitor all those things, right? And you can set it all up, set up all the sensors to do that. Okay. But what happens when it's time to grow a new crop? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't want to have to go back and redo all the sensors and all that stuff. You really want a business process that somebody can go in and, and say, now we're growing this crop. And here are all the parameters for this crop. For that. This and is corn. Boom. Yes. Right? The greenhouse now monitors and handles itself on those parameters. Yes. Right? And yes. so that's really what I built. And you and I started doing some live streams about building actual hardware. Yeah. But then my life, life. fell apart. So um, we had to stop. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We'll do another project. Yeah. But so that was like, what, January last year? No, February, March? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that project was supposed to be done in Q2 last year. Okay. And I actually finished it the week before Christmas. <laughs> we have those times. 
Do you have a link to, I'm just Googling Camunda Greenhouse. I can put some links in the chat. Oh, here we go. A proof of concept using Camunda and IoT to control a greenhouse. This is the part two. And I'm going to throw it into our chat. Okay. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. <laughs> Have you two met? Actually, it's small. The developer advocate world is kind of small. You two might have met at uh, All Things Open. We did meet at All Things Open. That's where we met. Yeah. So, but that that was the, we were still working on the outside hardware because I built a weather station. Okay. And so that's out in the yard. Um, my wife hates it because it's ugly and it's like made with duct tape and like it's Do you have the, a first, picture? the first one I made actually kind of blew up, <laughs> but I learned something. I learned about something called conformal coatings, which is something that you can paint on circuit boards to make them waterproof, but it doesn't like affect the electronics oh that is so cool so because if you just put them outside even in like in an enclosure moisture gets on them and they short out and all kinds of bad things happen so got it got it that was not great um i should probably put conformal coatings on this stuff in the greenhouse just in case i spill but um the only thing in the greenhouse that actually I'm not using is the water pump. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's made for watering like really big plants. Um, and I have really little plants. <laughs> Hi. Maybe, can you get like a mister or something since the scale of the greenhouse is so tiny? All right, would that be beyond the scope of the project? I just, also, I just want to come over to your house and play with your IoT stuff. <laughs> yeah. While David grabs that, um, I'm going to do a shout out. If you are watching on LinkedIn or Facebook, um, sometimes the connection between the restream is a little bit glitchy. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube. Um, that's where our uh, Oak Grove is your base off of. But in the meantime, you're back. The mister. Let's see. So this is the pump. Mm -hmm. And it's got this giant tube. And it turns out for this little tiny pump, if you, you have to drop the whole thing in water yeah. and then it pumps out the tube and then like four seconds, it'll flood that little greenhouse. <laughs> Got it. It's really efficient. So I don't know about putting a mister on it or just a smaller hose, but that was... It was too much at the time. I was running out of time. So Yeah, 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 totally. And in the week of Christmas, when that was actually all happening, there's a a servo that opens the door. Yeah. And there's a fan that I can turn on and off. Yeah. And um, the servo broke the little arm that opens the door and closes. Mm -hmm. So it was working for a while and now it's just open because <laughs> if I make it open or close, bad things happen. So Oh, that's heartbreaking. So, so Kamunda is the part that is like, okay, our temperature is too high. So we open, we theoretically open a window and turn on a fan. Um, Kamunda decides, okay, the temperature is too low, blah, blah, blah. And then Kamunda, does it interact with a uh, database? Does it have its own database? So um, I'm going to try and 
open. Oh, you're going to share screen? I'm going to try to share my screen. Okay. Pendenza in streaming. Okay. So, share my screen. If you all have any questions about Comunda or information of things or open source, frankly, uh, let us know in the chat. And I'm going to let David sort out his shared screen a little bit. Yes, I can. Here you go. Okay. So this is the process that runs the greenhouse. And I'll step you through what's going on. So this is a timer event. Can and you make this, it bigger? I can probably embiggen it, yes. Embiggen it. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, but done. Okay. So this is a timer event. And this timer repeats every two minutes. Okay. So it's sensing every two minutes? So it, every two minutes, it says we're growing something. Mm -hmm. It kicks off, and these are what's called uh, parallel process events. So it kicks off this, which starts one of these, and starts one of these, and starts one of these, and starts one of these simultaneously, right? And I'll just go through one of them because it's, it's uh, so the CO2 monitor, right? So when this gets here, it starts a CO2 process, and it checks the CO2. And what it actually does is it goes out to the database that, that I have and does a query for mm -hmm. the average CO2 over the last two minutes and gets a number back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have these. So it, it gets that number back and it sends it to this gateway. And... If the CO2 is greater than 1,500 and it's less than 3,000, that's really high, right, for this crop. If I look at this one, if it's greater than 300, the plants are probably going to die. I know that if I go in there, I'm in serious danger of dying, right? And <laughs> if it's, so if it's neither of those, so it's below 1,500, right, yeah. because it didn't match either of these, it goes this way. And it says, okay, CO2 is normal, right? And the process ends. And what these are called escalation events. And so it kicks off the escalation event, whether it's a normal, a high, or a critical. And it sends that information to this other sub process down here mm -hmm. that sends a message to the vent control mm -hmm. to to open the vent and what it and so this one will say uh sends fan on vent open no pump yeah right? yeah because yeah. it's critical so we want the doors open we want the fans on you want everything the the whole yes door. right yes fire this this one sends the command that says we don't need a fan we don't need a fan a vent and the, we're not doing anything with the pump, right? Okay. Right? This one, no fan, but we'll open the vent, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. so, it, so each one of these escalation events will, will send different sets of commands to, and this is the vent control, which controls both the vent and the fan. So it opens the vent and or turns on or off the fan, right? Yeah. And then... So here's the here's the fan control message, right? So if we're going to turn the fan on, this one is called, right? So it gets the escalation events as well. Mm -hmm. And then way down here is the pump control messages. And they only get sent from here. We check the soil moisture, right? Mm -hmm. If it's too wet, turn the pump off if it's on. If it's too dry, turn the pump on, right? That's it. Is... And then is it, the pump only checked every two minutes then? It is, and that's one of the problems. Is okay. that I need to I need to come back and fix this. Yeah. And what I really need to do is to have the pump go on for a specified amount of time. Right? Yeah, like seconds in this case. Yes. 
So now, ooh, infinite recursion. <laughs> <laughs> I love recursion. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, uh, I'm going to find my database bash dashboard here. Um, okay. And I'll share that and we can see what's actually going on in the. But before I do that, I have to get the password. So. Yeah, I've got your screen off, 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 um, off scene, by the way. So Thank you. you can type your password with uh, ease. Only I can see it. Because they've disabled my built-in password checker thing. Okay, so Aww. now we can go back to sharing my screen. Do I have to start it again or can you start Nope. It? I've got you. Okay. Do you embiggen it? I can, but let me get to the actual dashboard that we're going to use before I embiggen things. Oh, wow. You've got a lot of dashboards. Oh, and you're using... Um... I'm using uh, uh, Influx right now for this. Influx. Yep. So uh, we'll enable auto refresh. Um, we'll refresh every... 10 seconds. So we can see that, you know, the, the CO2 level, here's the CO2 level. It's actually, uh, it's fairly high. I should quit breathing. That'll fix it. <laughs> um, so here's my CO2 level. Here's my soil moisture level, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, here's the temperature and it's in Celsius. Okay. Yeah. And, and here's as it my should be. Right, and here's the um, the relative humidity. Mm. Right, so um, the this process is actually I may have halted it because it sends out a lot of messages and it was just overwhelming me. Um, so this process actually goes and uh, um, and you know does these queries. Mm -hmm. and then puts the data back and either turns the fan on, opens the vent, or or turns the pump on based on what it gets back from that, right? Yeah. And I, I have to redo this model. I had a great meeting with one of my colleagues, Al Gihan, the other day about how I could do this model better mm -hmm. um, so that these things sort of run autonomously and so that I can make those those global variables of here's the here are all the limits I want to set right because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right now right now the way it's it's happening is I would have to go into each one of these humidity is greater than fifty percent or mm -hmm. humidity is less than seventy five percent right and that so what did he say so there's a, there's a there's a sub process that I can add to this where mm -hmm. I can set all those variables right. Oh, cool. And so I can just go in and I can update those variables in the sub process and it will fan them out to all of these other sub processes. Right? Oh, that's nice. So that these amounts will be variables instead of hard coded, right? Mm -hmm. I could have, you know, you know, high floor and high ceiling and yeah, critical, yeah, yeah, yeah. critical ceiling, right? So I can set those as a. Yeah, as yeah. a as a, as a per instance variable, and then I can just change that, and I don't have to redeploy, because right now, if I change these, I would have to go and redeploy the model to the runtime. So, okay, bit of a pain. To the database, right? Yes, so let's try. We're gonna go to Did I kill it? All right, so let me go make sure that Kamunda's actually running. <laughs> Are you running Kamunda locally on your system or is it something no. that can run on the greenhouse or it's a I'm cloud? On a server. Nice. So I'm running our in, an individual instance of it on my uh, 
server that you own? Yes. Okay. And is that is that the open source version or is that the enterprise version? So I was running the open source version, but I wanted to be able to show the features of the enterprise version. Right. So I'm now running the enterprise version. Um, What's the difference? I will show you. As soon as I, I don't know if you're showing my screen right now, but. Um, I am showing your screen right now. Do you want me to stop? No, no, it's fine. Okay. I just have to figure out what port is running on because I have so much stuff running on this server. That is a lot. Look at that. What? Yeah. <laughs> um. Dear Cockroach Labs, I would also like to have my own server. Thank you. Well, this is my, this is like nobody, I pay for this. Um, and oh. I can give you space on this server if you want. But um, What? Why is, oh, I wonder if it's running on it. No. I, I almost can read that, except not at all. Are you working on a, Linux system or yeah, it's a uh, CentOS. So <gasps> oh. are you go. using CentOS stream or CentOS um, OG old school old school. So can you see my screen still? Yes. Okay. So I will go into Ooh, I see stuff. Yes, you see stuff. So this, all this stuff down here is actually enterprise version. Um, <laughs> but Touche, Adrian, see. we are serverless. I need to not ask for servers because we are serverless. Touche, touche. Thank you, Adrian. So I have a whole bunch of stuff running here. I actually have a an automatic Skittles dispenser that runs on uh, Kamunda. Um, Can you make it bigger? Yes. Can you see that? A little bit bigger. Can you see that? Awesome. So this is my automatic Skittles dispenser. And what happens with my automatic Skittles dispenser is I have these little, uh, these little um, dogs don't get Skittles. Right. Um, and if it is a person, then it sort of evaluates your mood, right? Oh. Um, and it decides how many Skittles that you get based on your happiness, your anger, your surprise, and your joy, right? So it goes in and it, and it looks at all things and it decides on my... I have Wait. A secret proprietary formula. How so many Skittles you get? If you're and then it dispenses them. If you're happier, do you get more Skittles or? Okay. So <laughs> it does. It totally sounds like profiling. I'm just kidding. It's totally <laughs> so. So, um. Angry Skittles. Oh my gosh! Does it give you more Skittles if you're angry? I really need more Skittles. So. <laughs> If your anger is greater than 0%, it takes your anger amount and multiplies it by five, right? Okay. And if your anger is less than or equal to zero, it you get no extra Skittles for that, right? Okay, okay. And then we have uh, um, joyful Skittles, right? Oh my God. This is one. This is my completely, absolutely, a hundred percent, and entirely made up random calculation based on your joy. Takes your joy amount, divides it by four, and then multiplies that by twenty. Very scientific. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is be this is behavioral psychology at its best. I made all of this up, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I um, fully support it. 
sad skittles you get your your sad amount three three times right okay so angry angry is worth more than sad go on um and then (laughs) it takes your all of your oh this is the old one no sorry um (laughs) so there's surprise skittles too right and that's times divided by three and multiplied by two i love this Oh my. It's totally made up, right? But I love this so much. It runs these uh and here here we is this yeah, besides Skittles. If it's a if it's a not a picture, you get nothing. Right. You actually have to be there. Right. It has to be a person because it has to be a person, trust, not a ghost. Right, or my dog and my dog would teach himself to push the button and take him picture so he could have Skittles. Hundred percent. Right. You've so also it, built a dog treat dispenser as well, haven't you? And it has it to be a dog. The, it turns out it's the same same concept hardware. Yes. yes. Yeah. So then at the end, it just adds up all the Skittles, right? Your angry Skittles, your sad Skittles, your surprise Skittles, and your joy Skittles. Okay. And it dispenses that number of skittles that number of skittles whatever that is and again if it's not a picture like it's not a person you get nothing right because tr- trust me bruno would be at this thing all day going skittles 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 he's a dork i feel like i need to build this is it online did you upload the schema i have not but i i absolutely should because um oh actually i may have uh, I built this thing originally for, it was the very first thing I ever did in, in Kamunda. And I, I joined the company the first week of October of 2020. And the first thing they said is, Hey, can you do a project for us for Halloween? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what Kamunda is and I don't know what Kamunda does, but sure. Um, I'll do it. So, no problem. So yeah, sure. So that's what I did is I built this actually in the, um, the original version was, I may even have the, have that. I found the link the ori- or not the uh, original version, but, um, it's, uh, I found the blog. Yeah. It's on the, it's on our website. The blog's on our website and I don't think I'm running that model anymore. So here's my greenhouse. And there's 17 running instances and 39 incidents. So I've certainly broken something, right? (laughs) And here it is in all its glory. And it is paused. See this little, you probably can't see that because it's too small, but. Tiny. This is the dashboard for ants. Yes. Thank you. Right. So it's suspended because um, it was. Because they're like, you broke too much. It was going absolutely bonkers. And let's go to my task list. And there's most likely a bunch of, oh, there's no tasks. Okay. None. I took care of them all. Um, I wonder where it's breaking. Let's go back to, and yes, I do have something called the dictator bot that runs. Um, I do. I does in, does somebody want to know what that is? Do I want to know what that is? Um, I'm scared. I can show you. No, it's so. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm part of something called the uh, Devrel Collective. So if you're a yes. Devrel professional, you can join this Devrel Collective, which is on Slack. And right. I'm also part of the admin team that runs that. And we get applications like you cannot believe and we have to process them all and so we call ourselves the benevolent dictators and the dictator bot decides who's on call this week oh okay and lets that person and all the other benevolent dictators know this person's on call that week and also if i'm on call but i can't do it then i can send a command to a slack command and to the bot to the bot and put somebody else on call. Okay. Okay. And, and that's so devrelcollective.fun, right? Yes. It's devrelcollective.fun. And you pr- probably can't, uh, 
see this because it's very small. Um, and for some reason, blowing this up blows up like everything. Right, so it makes everything big. But I can go and I look, look at the history. And this is the history for today, but I can look at all the history. And it sent 31 messages and it's updated the on-call 26 times. So this is part of Enterprise Edition as well, is I can see history of what's happened, right? So the and open source version doesn't have history or is it limited? It, it, it does not have history. And it also doesn't have this really cool heat map, right? Wow, that's cool. For so how it's much there, it's I, gone through that process? Yeah. So here's how many times I've sent it a message, a Slack message, and and it's gone and says, is this person an author authorized user? And it has to go look up the authorized users. Um, here's if somebody just asks for help, if you ask for who's on call, yeah. if you ask to see what their rotation is, all these other things, right? Yeah. Um, and if you're not an authorized user, then it formats a message and it sends you a message yeah. saying, no, mm -mm. go away. Mm -mm. But then it also has this timer event. Mm-hmm that goes off every Monday at 1 p.m. to update the on-call status and set a new benefitator as on-call. And so you'll okay. see that that's why this has got much more uh, activity. Yeah, right? yep. Is because this is what happens more often. People don't often send a message to it. We just wait for it to tell us what to do, right? <laughs> I, need, I need one of those bots in my life. Just and tell me what to do. Go, so I can even go into uh, the the actual an actual instance that ran right, and it was an auto dictator instance. So it's stuck here, and you can see that I'm in this one, and it updated the on call, it formatted a message, and a message, and then it completed. Nice. And so I can and here are all the each. This is each of the steps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so. And I can see if there were any variables. There weren't, right? But I can see what was, oh, I can actually step through and see what was going on, you know, what, what that actual process was. And it tells me what that process was. Mm -hmm. And I'm in history. Yeah. But I can go back to runtime and there's nothing happening, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not it's Monday at it's one. It's not Monday at one o'clock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I could go send it a message. And we could see that happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll just go back here and we'll go down to Greenhouse, which is, you know, I. I it's a lot of, a lot of red incidents. Yep. That's 39. And I, see, and I can see all the history on it. This is just today and it's been stalled. So I'll just do all history. And it's run a lot, right? Mm -hmm. 54 instances here, 50 here. And I can turn the heat map on. You can see what's been going on. It's all backed up here waiting, right? Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. waiting for all these other processes. And that's what's backed up. Um, and so this is actually, this helps me to design a better process. Yeah. Because I can hear and look and say, wait, why am I doing this? I don't need to do that, right? I don't need this gateway to, you know, to wait for everything to arrive here before it goes out, right? Right. Why don't, um, I can just have it go here. And this is why I, I turned it off was because every two minutes it puts a, a, a user task in my queue to tell me, and it, and it shows me all the variables and what was done. Every two minutes, it's like, there's a, I can't keep up with them. Like going and saying, oh, that one, and then completing that and completing that task. And so there's, there's, in a large ways, there's no reason to even have this one, right? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Should, what I should have is some, some escalation events for here didn't go well here, right? Right. If that, that happens. Then I want to see a, a, a task show up that I have to go and look at so that I can go and fix it, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, don't bother the on-call technician unless there's an actual fire. Right. 
don't bother the on-call technician every two minutes with, yep, we check the temperature. Yep, yep. check the CO2. Temperature's yep. still there. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, still there, yep. still happening. Yep. Still no existing, worries. yep. Yeah, um, yeah. So does this start to make more sense now? It totally does. does. How does one get started with Camundo? Like, let's say I want to dive into the open source project. Um, besides uh, collaborating on the docs, which, you know, we're pretty comfortable with, um, what language, for example, is Camunda written in the open source it, version? It, it's written in Java. Oh, cool. Um, we have, so if you want to, like, actually contribute to the to Camunda itself, mm -hmm. um, that's in Java. Mm -hmm. um, there are other ways to contribute. So um, if we go, we look at this is what we call our, this is what's called the modeler. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's where you build models. So I can. Decision a, models. Yeah. So I can create a new model and let's say. I'm hungry. All right. Uh, it's nice to meet favorite. you, hungry. I'm Rain. Right. And so. What to eat? Well, actually, that's not the. Let's not use that one. Let's do this. Can you make it bigger? Yes, I can. But now it's off the off the map. There. Can you see that? No. Where do? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And I can make this whatever kind of task I want. So I can make this a user task. Right, mm -hmm. where I will go in and decide what to eat, and then I've decided what to eat, and let's say this one is going to be. So the diamond oops. is decision. Yeah, it's a decision, right? Okay. And then I can. This one's going to be. Um, Mac and cheese. Oh, I love it. Cookies, mac and cheese, or ice cream. That's uh, how did you know I those was are, ice cream? Those are my three options for lunch every day. Uh, I'm a actually, very healthy I, I, person. I was going for ice cream next, right? So and I could clean this up a little bit by you no. Know, so it's more readable, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Get ice cream. Make cookies. Oh, order mac and cheese. <laughs> so, I, there's all sorts of stuff I can do here. This is a really simple one, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and then, so we're going to bring these all back together. Because then you eat. And the next thing we do is eat food. And then since we ate food. I just I just learned about nugs today. Have you heard of nugs, David? No. What are nugs? <sighs> exactly. Um, so they're chicken nuggets that are not made from chicken. Oh, yes, I have heard of them. Yeah, I totally have ordered some, maybe more than I should. Well, and funny that you should mention that. I was just talking to my wife the other day, and I may have to go spend another year being vegan. So um, my cholesterol is going up, right? And that so what I do is like every, I don't know, it's been 10 years now. I went vegan for a year, and my cholesterol dropped to like the basement. And then I stopped being vegan and it's been 
slowly, slowly creeping up. But after 10 years, it's like my doctor's like, now it's high. So but that's, oh. got, that's got nothing to do with this. So, right, this is my process. I'm hungry. <laughs> so I'll decide what to eat. And then... Wait, did you just talk about your cholesterol and we're deciding to eat between the ice cream cookies and mac and cheese? I think I understand why <laughs> yours and my cholesterol is a little bit high. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and make this a, an actual, we'll actually do something with this. We'll make this a, an expression and it is food equals... Ice cream. Okay. I spell ice cream, right? And well, actually, you know what? Let's not do that because this is going to be the default. Ice cream should don't. always be the default. If we don't ice choose cream. anything, we have ice cream. We end up with ice cream, right? And so we'll make this uh, an expression. And we'll say food equals Mac. And I'll have to go check my other one to see if I've got the syntax right on this because I never know. Um, yeah, I did get it right. Okay, so, and this one will be an expression, food equals cookies. Okay. Okay. And we'll make this another user task so that we'll actually have to do that. Okay. And now, We'll go down here and we'll deploy it. We have to, so let's call this our food model. And I, I totally not doing what the doctor ordered food model. Right. And it said deployment succeeded. Oh, cool. So now if we go back to our dashboard, and I know you have you have the enterprise version running, but this yeah. is all within the scope of the open source version as well, right? Is, yes, this is all in the scope of the open source. And you'll mm -hmm. see that. Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, I didn't name it. So it's called process 16 YDXVZ. Nice. Right? Here it is. Yeah, like you do. Okay, like you do. So if we go over here to our task list and let's start a process, we'll start this obviously named one and we're going to add a variable name, which is food. And it's a string. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're just going to make it empty. And we'll start. The process Enjoy your walk. Started, right? Oh, look, we have a task. It's called what to eat. All right? <laughs> nice. And we'll, we're going to claim this task. And let's add a variable. Let's say food. It's a string and we'll say cookies stay warm think of freshly baked cookies while you Complete. take the walk and now, now oh food do you see that nice so let's go back to our coffee. i love it and we'll go here and we have this and you can see that i was hungry i decided what to eat I said cookies. Apparently I made the cookies. You didn't see me, but it was really fast. It and now I get impressive. To, and now eat food, right? 
I love and it. If I go, and if I go back to my task list, I have one task, which is eat food. And I can claim that task because I'm the hungry one, not you. And I can complete that task. And now I'm done. So I'd, I'd say we, that's arguable. I, I am hungry as well. Uh, okay, that's fair. Can I, I use guess. this? Um, <laughs> you can't determine whether or not I'm hungry. Is that what you were about to say? No, I can't give you a cookie over the internet. But that um, internet fail. Absolutely. But the other thing I can do, so, you know, make cookies. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right? But I can also make this a, a, an expanded sub process. Right. So I can, I can make this actually a, uh, um, a recipe where it gives you a, like a sub process, get a flour, get sugar, right. get eggs, get chocolate and chips. There's a, there's a, uh, and basically in that sub process, I can put my model of how I have to make cookies. Right. Yeah. 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 And I can, and I can have decisions like, do I have flour? Do I yeah. have chocolate chips? Do yeah. I, you know, depending on what kind of, and I can make different sub process for different kinds of cookies. And I, so I yep. can, I could have another decision here of what kind of cookies do you want? Do you want mm -hmm, sugar cookies mm -hmm. or chocolate chip cookies or snickerdoodles? And you're killing right, so me. So you can see how it can it can get bigger and bigger, but you can collapse these sub processes so it just looks like make cookies, and then another process runs, which is actually the make cookies part, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I'm if I'm okay, uh, if this I is, am so someone, mod then mo modelers free and open mm -hmm. source. So you can go download it for Kamunda and you can build your models. Okay. Right. Uh, the Kamunda engine, which is what we use over here, mm -hmm. is free and open source. So you you can build a your own Java process in Spring Boot that incorporates all of this mm -hmm. and deploy that. And then you can have all the um, the you know, anything that's not a user task, you can actually have run as a, uh, you know, as a, as a Java process within that same Spring Boot application. Yeah, cool. This is so cool. I want to, I just want to go play now. Um, we do not have time to play today. Well, what it um, does is it makes you want to like model everything that you do, right? so that you can like lay out all of the things, all the steps. And whether I run the model or not, I at least have a model now of, of here's all the steps that I have to do. And then I can take each one of those steps and I can break them down into sub models. And I may not run it as a business model, but exactly. I it's, can see it's all laid out, right? Exactly. It seems like this would be incredible for um, the daily to-do list, the, uh, the recipe database um right. i i literally every day for lunch and the afternoon snack have no idea what i'm going to eat and so so something like this would be awesome to to like just randomize sandwich salad soup or whatnot and yep. david you froze okay you're back um and and just tell me what to eat so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> so I could go in here and make this a service task, right? Mm -hmm. And it would call an external service to roll the dice and come back with a number. And based on the number, it would pick that. I could have it be a script task and I can actually add a JavaScript script in this little window over here. Nice. To decide randomly. A randomizer, you know, nice. I can ran randomize so that I get ice cream every day. <laughs> oh, I don't know how You're, that happened. This stream <laughs> is gonna get you in so much trouble with your doctor and with my doctor. Um, but unfortunately, it is time for us to go for the day. Um, okay. David, thank you so much for joining me today, talking about Kamunda, talking about Internet of Things. Um, we had some great questions uh, from good friends. And hello, Adrian, who's now walking his corgi in the freezing cold New York weather. Uh, not some, it's been a bit of Skittles day. It's been a bit of dog's day. Um, 
<laughs> Bias pseudo random generator sound, seems familiar. Yes, it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the one thing to know about random numbers is that they're not. They're not. It's good to see you, Bach Joe. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. If you if you want to get another IoT project going, I would love to do one with you. It was a lot of fun, and it doesn't have to be a greenhouse. It could totally be a M and M dispenser just to run it. Actually, I think I think you and I working on a project to do together is a very bad idea. And now that I think about it, I think our cholesterol will not be able to handle that. <laughs> well, Skittles are low cholesterol. <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Yeah, they're high sugar, but they're low cholesterol. And what I really wanted was a gummy bear dispenser, but they, they buggers stick. stick together and it's really hard yeah. to so. I have to design an actual dispenser for them. And once I have that, then we can build one that like dispenses them. Okay. Challenge accepted. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me today. Oh. It's really good to see you, Paul, as well. Um, yeah. We're having a lot of fun. Uh, next. Thanks for having me. Yes. Anytime. I'll come back anytime. Just let me know. Just come. Just let me know. Yes. So you are officially my first guest on the open source stream. Um, <laughs> I normally am just like exploring like a new, what a new project is. I like this format a lot. Let me know if you're interested in being a guest. You have to have an open source stream, but we'd love to talk to you about your projects as well. And uh, David's putting the Skittles link up it's open source as well right yeah i gotta actually go find it it's uh um yeah i love it cool but i'll send and it to you and you can put it on on there so perfect and for some reason my music completely went away so there we are there we are I got it yeah thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time oh Tomorrow is casual coding. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday is developing with CockroachDB and uh, the workshop in the office hours. And Friday is, yeah, I'll be playing with Roaches again. We're playing with Dev Sisters. Um, thanks for joining me, David. We're gonna dance our way out of here. <laughs>